What is up, everyone? Uh, welcome to the uh, first episode of No One's a Critic, uh, the most popular podcast of all time, or going to be in the future, um, <laughs> between uh, yeah, between me um, and Macabre Storytelling. So um, because this is episode one, I thought we'd give a quick little intro, keep it kind of short and light, and then we'll jump into the meat of, of what this episode's going to be about. So uh, let me allow my co-host to introduce himself here. Uh, yeah, Macabre Storytelling, or Macabre, Macabre, we don't really police it. Uh, I go by Mac. Um, I was lucky enough to get in touch with Kino here, and we had a great talk on his channel, So, and then he approached me with the idea for the uh, the podcast, and I'm super excited. Uh, one of the pending titles that Kino thought up was uh, Culture, was it Culture War Veterans? Culture War Veterans, yeah. yes. Yeah. So I think that's a good, that's a good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A good vibe as to, I think, what we'll bring to the table in terms of, I think you'll find that we're very middle ground when it comes to a lot of mm -hmm. these issues. Like, you don't, don't expect, like, super, super vitriolic hot takes. But. Yeah, if you're, if you're looking for us to be, like, you know, bleeding heart liberals or, you know, super reactionary conservatives, you're not going to get that. I think... Yeah. Some of you are going to get pissed off when you hear how moderate, uh, at least we come off. I mean, maybe some of you are going to think like having a moderate opinion is actually supporting the other side here. But um, really, from our discussions, we, we, land te we tend to land in the middle and um, tend to see the validity of both sides and also the stupidity of both sides. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, both, uh, they're both of those things at the same time. Um, now, quick little intro for me. Uh, if you guys don't know who I am, I'm Pure Kino. I just go by Kino. Um, I'm most known for doing Soprano reviews. Uh, I reviewed every episode of The Sopranos, and I made a bunch of video essays about it. I'm slowly starting to expand into other things like uh, Breaking Bad and Boardwalk Empire and a lot of these um, great shows. But uh, like Max said, um, we just had an amazing chat on my channel, and I wanted to uh, keep working with Mac. And he was um, very gracious to agreed to do this podcast with me when we really did not know each other. I just reached out to him um, after that first episode. I'm like, hey, do you want to do this thing with me? And um, yeah, he was very great about doing that. So I'm so excited. I think these conversations um, are going to be very interesting and engaging. Um, like Max said, we're going to talk about culture. We're going to talk about news. We're going to talk about media, uh, talk about our lives and our YouTube process. It's just going to be like a general um, everything type of podcast um, filtered through our point of view here. And uh, the first thing up to bat, get the, get it up to bat, um, oh, is, uh, <laughs> yeah, ex <laughs> expect a lot of dumb jokes from me, but... Um, from Kino, yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, the, but the first thing up to bat here is uh, The Batman, which is um, very new as of recording this. It came out two days ago. Um, everyone was super excited about it. Um, or w was super not excited about it for certain reasons, but um, we thought it would be a great thing to to talk about something new for once and talk about you know our thoughts on it, you know the culture, how it affects everything, um, and just you know be a general review as well. So um, I'll turn it over to you, Mac. Here, um, do you want to give make maybe a quick summary of the movie, uh, spoiler free, but just like the general gist of like what it's about? Yeah, we course. will we will get into spoilers by the way, so. We'll we'll talk we'll we'll announce that before we get into there, but um, just so, what what people can expect from this movie. Yeah, of course. Um, well, it's it it's, it portrays Batman. I don't think we've actually seen him before in any of the live action films. He's only about I think a year or two into his career, mm -hmm. if you can call it that. Um, his vigilanteism, if you will. Um, so he's it's a very different Batman. We're we're sort of used to. Well, I mean, we, we did sort of see Batman come to be in Nolan's Batman. Mm -hmm. But even so, we didn't really see a transition period yeah. um, into the Batman that we, you know, we really think of. Uh, what I, without spoil, again, without spoilers before we get into it, um, the film is really a transitional film. It's It's really about sort of Batman, or Bruce, I should say, going from sort of very angry he's sort of still he's still young enough or sir, still early in his career where he's still sort of like he's lashing out um 
that's his crime fighting is more of just sort of like an emotional reaction. But throughout the movie, he starts to see the effects that has on those around him and how it's having sort of the opposite effect he would, he's hoping. Um, and by the end, he sort of becomes the Batman yeah. we kind of we think we, we kind of know and love yeah. to some extent. It's, it's it's not really an origin story, so to speak. So we're not going through all the you know the the shtick that we've seen in a million Batman movies, which is you know his parents getting killed at the movie theater, you know him training under his different mentors. That's already been that's already happened in the backstory, and we're seeing him you know very early on in his career, but um, he's already in in costume from the first moment we see him. Um, and I guess I guess this is getting into spoilers, so well, let's just it's let's hard, just say it's hard. Not, it's a hard. To I know. Talk about yeah, it, yeah. Um, it, but we'll just we'll just say right here at this point, um, <laughs> we're gonna start talking about spoilers. If yeah. you haven't seen the movie uh, and you don't want to be spoiled, uh, don't keep listening. Although, come back, please, because we really need the views early <laughs> on. Um, but uh, we'll we'll start talking about spoilers here. So, um, the, the in the movie, Batman is fighting the Riddler who they do a very interesting take on the Riddler. You know, normally he's like just a, a dude in a green uh, suit with a question mark on his tie or whatever. And he's just like, riddle me this, you know. But in this one, they have him like, he's like the Zodiac Killer. I read that that was the inspiration. He's got um, a mask over his face. Um, he's leaving all these clues, killing people in like, uh, you know, weird ways, like kind of like seven as well, like very mm -hmm. thematic, you know, kills. And um, it's interesting. I don't know how much of like a Batman fan are you? Are you have you consumed a lot of media outside the movies or has it just been kind of the normal stuff? Mostly just um, the Bale movies. Okay. Um, even even the previous movies, the Keaton movies, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with. Yeah. yeah. Um, funny, funny enough, before the Bale movies, the most, the one I had seen the most was um, Batman Forever. Oh which yeah, is yeah, the yeah. weirdest. Which is like, rep reputation wise, is such a weird. I I like that movie. I actually want I want to come I want to come back to that in a bit because I I I feel like there's an influence on this film a little bit. But for me, um, I was really into Batman growing up. Like I watched all the cartoons, watched all the movies. I read some comic books, and then I kind of fell out of comics for a while. Um, it's kind of like the like the the Scorsese meme, right? Where I kind of started to feel like comic book movies or you know cape shit for if we're, if we're leaning into the meme of it was having a real negative effect on hollywood um specifically i kind of felt like christopher nolan um in his dark knight you know verse ha was a really great movie a really really solid movie still one of my top 10 movies but it had this really um unintended effect where all movies were copying it so to speak mm. all movies after that had to be hyper realistic they had to explain everything it had to be like real life and i didn't i didn't like that as it went on and on it got really old for me and i like that in this last year it felt like we had kind of shook off some of the nolan influence like there was movies like uh, godzilla versus king kong and um mortal kombat which leaned more into like the silliness it's like we can be silly again it doesn't have to be explained we can just have fun and it felt like this movie was kind of carrying on that tradition of like trying to shake off the nolan's effect on on the batman because nolan looms so large it was it's the number one um move it made the most money out of like any movie like ever basically except mm -hmm. for like i think maybe titanic or gone with the wind or something like that well it's it's funny i actually put a poll um not poll but i i put a community post saying that i thought that the batman was better than the dark knight and a Ooh. lot of people were not happy Ooh, that's a that. spicy take right there and I, I honestly stand by it even even though it's i only saw the movie like two days ago mm -hmm. um i think what it did better than the dark knight is very evident i think looking back the dark knight was incredibly influential there's no mm -hmm. denying that um both good and bad like it's yeah. you know it had good effects it had negative effects um yeah. and that influence is something to take into account when you're you know ranking or yeah of course considering if a film is great but um yeah it kind of because that always ran to the problem with batman where i mean like you can you can probably um flesh it out a bit more since you're familiar with the comics but there's always sort of that um what's what i'm looking for that sort of um, elephant in the room of the fact that, you know, 
fucking as silly. Ground, as grounded, yeah, as grounded as the Nolan films are, at the same time, it's a dude running around in a bat costume. I know. Which, and you, you kind of have to contend with that, but... You, you have to... You have to suspend your disbelief a little bit. Like Nolan went out of his way to like explain it. Like here's how the technology works. Here's how the suit works. It's all hyper realistic. Um, but I, I don't necessarily agree with your take that it's better than the Dark Knight. But I really, really like that. Um, they're they're not afraid in this movie to embrace um, like the the highly stylized elements. That was my favorite part of the movie. It's like I love that he lives in this tower that looks like um, the the Keaton dark knight which is like mm-hmm. very gothic architecture like gargoyles and shit inside of it um i like that the cave has bats flying around everywhere even though that would like they would shit all over the computer and, and, the, <laughs> and the you know in the cave like who cares let's just let's embrace the motif here let's have fun with it um i like that gotham looks so sinister um i like that he's also walking around like he goes into like the nightclub just and knocks on the front door it's like in the Dark Knight, he would only ever pop out of the shadows because that was realistic. And he does do that here, but it's like, oh no, he's just, he's at the Gotham PD, you know, talking with people because that's more like comic book Batman. Um, and Batman is like one of these things that like spans like every single genre. Like you can have like the cartoons, which are like super silly and, you know, uh, you know, comic booky, And then you can have the movies, which are super serious. So you could Batman's like a blank canvas. You can do whatever you want with him um and i i wanted to also hear your thoughts about like um what you thought about the other characters like the the riddler catwoman we've got penguin for a little bit um how did they rank up for you in this movie i think overall that it was perfect like for, for me the reason i think it outranks the dark knight primarily because of the story especially mm-hmm. especially the arc that bruce goes through um it's like it's like the perfect it's it's funny as i was watching the film i was like um i i didn't think the ending was gonna stick the landing until there was a a single moment we can talk about that in a bit but there's a single moment where like his arc is solidified and i was like oh shit that's perfect and then you look back and realize the entire film was building to this but um no uh, colin farrell as the penguin was like the real standout like i kept looking and i'm like i know it's him i because i know i know it's you but it's he was incredible in it he's um, he's really good about disappearing into uh roles um mm-hmm. like you don't even see it's him a lot of actors it's still them um but yeah he he really transforms himself and they're of course setting up that he's going to be one of the bad guys of the next one um along with possibly the joker they set up the joker at the end there which um i was a little bit like are we really gonna do the joker again because we did the Joker in the Dark Knight, and then we had the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix, like two standout movies. Mm-hmm. Is this one really going to stand up to those two classic films? Um, we'll see. Although it really, I, I, it really depends on the take. It uh, does how they're going to portray the character, but they've done they've done the super serious serial killer one, which they also did the serial killer with the Riddler here. They made him like the Zodiac killer. Um, so they have to do something kind of different and. Um, I was I, I was hoping that uh, with this new like silly element to the film, which is like we can embrace the comic book aspect of it, I'm really hoping that we get like a super powered bad guy because we have not had one with superpowers in movies um, in like like since Batman Forever, right? Like mm-hmm. Poison Ivy and and Mister Freeze, like or, uh, maybe, maybe uh, I the think ch- that was uh, the George Batman. And Robin, the George Clooney. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're which right. Which we that, don't talk about. No. Yeah, yeah. I like that one though. It's it's campy, but I it's again, it's not like the Dark Knight, which I really like. I'm like, I'm tired of seeing films that are just copying the Dark Knight. For what it is, it's like, yeah, like whether you have thought the Batman credit yeah, card. Yeah, yeah, grabbing like, credit card, on. and then Mr. Freeze is like, you know, all his ice puns, like ice to meet you. Um, like, well, I it's think fun. Matt I think Matt Reeves said that he was interested in looking into Mr. Freeze. That'd how to cool. make that character work. Well, they like they did it with the Riddler. They really like they really found a good yeah. middle ground with the Riddler. But um, Freeze, I don't know. We're we'll gonna have to see. Well, they have a fantastic origin story for Mister Freeze, which is the uh, the Batman the animated show. That's where his um, backstory of like his wife Nora um, is dying and he needs a cure, and then he's frozen in ice or whatever. And like mm-hmm. it's it's if you watch an episode, it's like it won, it won an Emmy, I think. Um, really standout origin, and so you can make it emotional and stuff. 
but he can still have his like freeze gun and freeze people. It's, it, it can be fun. Mm. I just want to have fun in movies again. I'm tired of like all this like seriousness and shit. So I, I would love like give us a superpower bad guy. It would fit into this Patterson verse. I don't know what we're, what we're calling it, but um, Pattinson. they're they're gonna do oh, yeah. Pattinson, Pattinson. Pattinson <laughs> Twilight. <laughs> Twilight 2, Revenge of the Batman. Um, I want to talk about uh, Robert Pattinson, too, because when people when it was announced that he was going to be Batman, people were pissed. They did not like the idea that the Twilight guy was going to be ruining their Batman franchise with his, you know, wooden performance and, you know, his stupid love story bullshit. Um, but what did you think about him as an actor in this one? I can't really remember how I reacted. I think I don't think it was like I was I, I wasn't pissed. Like you know, yeah. I was I'm not like the biggest fan of or like a hardcore fan. I like enjoy the films, but yeah, um, I was more interested. I was like, huh. It did help that I think when I when it was announced, I had seen him in Good Time, mm-hmm. uh, the Safdie brothers, and that apparently was the film that inspired Matt Reeves to sort of yeah. morph the character on Pattinson. Um, so then, after I had seen Good Time, I knew that he was more than you know Twilight. Yeah. Um. So I was like, huh. I I really didn't know how they were going to handle it. Yeah. Um. And then, but then when I heard that it was going to be like a younger, more inexperienced Batman, I was like, oh, yeah. okay. And and the more it kind of kept making sense. Yeah. But still, even going in, I wasn't sold. I was still like, hmm, I don't know. But um. I think he crushed. I think he crushed it. I think he's the best live action Batman. Yeah, I mean, again, nostalgia factors, the different yeah. styles, but it for me, it, for the one thing that it did right was because the the big issue I had with a lot of sort of like and outside of the comics or shows, but the the live action films is that the films didn't really lean into that. You know, Bruce, like Bruce is a very, very, very damaged individual. Yeah. Um, they kind of touch on it, like even the Nolan films. I felt like they didn't even really go into that a little bit here and there. Yeah. But Bale's portrayal was too. I felt he was too smooth, or it it, mm-hmm. it never really came it came across that like he's yeah. very very traumatized from yeah. what happened. And Pattinson was, he like I, I, it was fantastic. He was he sold the hell out of it. Yeah, I I like that aspect of it too. Like, for for lack of a better word, this is the emo Batman and. I was I I actually embraced that like it's been long enough where emo isn't really like cringe anymore. I was having fun even that like that stupid like hipster song that was playing um, when he was giving his like uh, his uh, you know soliloquy at the beginning and end of the movie. Oh well, that's well that's something in the way by Nirvana and that apparently. Um, Matt Sorry, Reeves I shouldn't said. I shouldn't have said I shouldn't have said it that way. But well, um, no, it's a, it's a very emo. No, it's, it's, a, it's an a emo song. Emo yeah, song. Yeah, 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 it's a very. Um, so uh, I like Nirvana, by the way, but um, it was uh, I was I was embracing it. I was like, yeah, OK, he's like a, he's a little emo in this one. And I like it. It's it's fun again to be emo. Mm. Um, but uh, it, um, fuck, I'm getting distracted. What I was going to say, you're right. It's he's we're, we're exploring like him more than than like the Batman persona, which I think they explored more in like the the Dark Knight and stuff like that. And. Um, it's interesting that they didn't do it as much because they had Christian Bale, who is one of the best actors of all time, like American Psycho. He can do a, a fucking damaged, broken individual um, and disappear into a role, too. But I think they kind of leaned more into like making him, you know, a typical good looking superhero type of vibe. And that's probably why those movies are so successful. But um well, yeah. Well, that's Robert. that's kind of the that's kind of the thing. It's like especially with the Dark Knight, and I and you know, I never I've never really had a chance to kind of discuss this, which I'm glad we can now. I always hated Bale as Batman. Ooh. I don't think I don't think he was bad by any means. Or actually, I should I, I I should I should put it differently. I should say I don't think Nolan really. Not that he didn't understand the character, but sometimes it kind of felt like he didn't really care about the character. To be completely honest. Like, it didn't really seem like, even in The Dark Knight Rises, where it's supposed to be about, you know, like, that was the thing, too. In The Dark Knight, I felt like his quote-unquote arc was very underwhelming. I felt like, it, as, like, sort of like a crime thriller in terms of, like, the te- the tension, the rising tension, it yeah. was phenomenal, like, yeah. untouched. But in terms of, kind of, you know, this whole idea of, like, pushing him to the limit, I never really got that 
across. I, I, I felt like it never really came across in the Dark Knight personally. I, th- I think the Dark Knight did like plot and theme really well. Like I liked that it was so, it's such a tight story. Like every beat revolves around the central theme of like, um, you either, you know, you either die a hero or live to see yourself the villain. And all the characters go through that. And it's, it, that's what I love about filmmaking, to be honest, is like those really tight thematic stories. But you're right. It wasn't focused as much on character. Um, we had or, much more set piece moments with like the Joker yeah. and the tension, really tense, really tightly paced, which was nice. Um, but yeah, we didn't explore Bruce as a character that much. Like, yeah, there's just stuff with him and Rachel, but um, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's not really time. there lame yeah. well it's it's funny that you i think you put it well is because from a thematic standpoint of like you know like the uh the 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 battle between like order and chaos yeah. thematically in terms of like the actual like you know the set pieces as you said it's portrayed perfectly there i think yeah. you know with like the fairy set yeah. piece that's probably the highlight but in terms of like because again, like the Joker's entire mission was to kind of, you know, try and bring that chaos out of Bruce to kind of yeah. make him go against his code. Mm-hmm. And there were a few moments where we kind of got hints of that. Like, so for for example, when Rachel's kidnapped, obviously we see him mm-hmm. kind of lose it. Um, yeah. But even then, like it never really <laughs> felt like, I never felt as if he was going to lose it. Like I, I thought like the sort of like the entire point of the Joker was to keep pushing Batman until he crosses the line but i never actually and again i don't think it was really bale's performance i think it was more with nolan it never got to the point where i ever even suspected that he was going to cross the line it never really got to that point for me he they they try to explore that a little bit with like the the phone thing which you know it it doesn't that 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 whole like dilemma of like is it okay for me to bug all the phones doesn't ring as true because the government absolutely does that to us to this day. Mm-hmm. So it's like I didn't really ever feel like Bruce crossed the line there to to bug everyone's phone. Um, but or even or then he even says at the end like he was only using it in this like one very extreme case. So it was kind of like yeah mm, that's that's kind of like why I actually appreciated Snyder Batman to some extent. Like I don't mm-hmm. think it was executed well. But the idea of Bruce kind of becoming a bit of a zealot, like yeah. kind of going overboard, I actually yeah. like that concept. They but. they didn't they didn't do that with Bruce, but they did it with uh, Harvey Dent. He's actually the kind of emotional mm-hmm. lead in that movie, um, which I appreciate. I thought it was a really good performance. Aaron Eckhart, I think, nailed it, um, and he's the one who goes to that emotional journey. Batman is kind of the stoic front, and that's kind of the the ending too. It's just like he can take all the the trauma that uh harvey dent couldn't harvey mm. dent failed he 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 went to madness like the joker wanted um but yeah in terms of like an like you could almost say that two-face was the main character of that movie in terms of emotional beats um mm-hmm. he's the one who goes to the journey and i thought you know you could argue maybe it should have been batman more but um i, I, I like i said balanced better yeah I like I said, that what that movie stood out to me so much was just the the pacing and the tightness. I love, love, love tight movies where every like single scene feels like it's directly connected to this overarching theme and it's all relevant. And I could watch that movie and feel like I didn't waste any single time with you know a useless scene. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, this movie I think in many ways uh, improves on like the stylized aspect of it beautiful visuals i fucking love the car chase sequence um it's exciting um we finally embrace the the silliness again with like the car with like the jet engine which was awesome um and and, you know something about that scene too is one of the things i think this like in terms of like a writing lesson something i've always had an issue with in movies is that action scenes kind of feel dropped in like I always, I always had this problem with Marvel, where like sometimes th- there'll be like an action scene, but it'll just be there. Nothing is really demonstrated in it. It's just yeah. like, oh, we need an action scene. Yeah. Like there's no tension, there's no character development. What I thought was incredible about the car chase was that, um, like, like, like just for context, he's trying to get the the penguin to yeah. question him about who's the rat in the Gotham Police Department. Uh, city hall police department but and so you could have just had him kidnap penguin at the at his harbor hideout and then you could just skip the chase scene 
Um, but obviously you want a kick ass chase scene. Yeah. But also what I loved about that scene is it really showed Batman's drive. Yeah. And it, and that was such an important part of his character where again, he's still like this younger, angry, confused. He's still like he's a kid. I think he's only supposed to be in his late twenties. Yeah. In the in the film. Um he's like he's like a young kid who's just yeah. angry and like he, he's he thinks he's fighting for justice or vengeance. But he's yeah. really kind of lashing out emotionally. Yeah. And that that car chase was so perfect in showing just how driven that mm-hmm. rage within him is pushing him to yeah. just never stop ever. Even mm-hmm. when that car comes to the flames, you're just like, holy fuck. Yeah. No, it's a it's a great sequence. I love the rain. Um, it gives it a very like noir kind of feel to it. Um, the visuals were just really, really stand out. I loved seeing Gotham um you know again spooky architecture which was awesome like really dilapidated you can tell this is a city like 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 decaying of of corruption and that's one of the themes right is like how all these leaders were corrupt and um you know it's it's a it's a political message and i think i'm going to start to get into some of the things i didn't like here which was uh there's one single line of dialogue which i absolutely hated and i want to know if you can can guess what that line of dialogue was was it uh catwoman to bruce <laughs> the white the white yeah. privilege why couldn't she just say privilege why did it have to be white privilege because that's not i didn't feel like that's what this movie was about but then that, yeah, but, that suddenly pulled me back into into 2022 yeah but i mean i get the same time it's like you know it's not given the context of her character it's not surprising that she would be like a woman of color in this world it's not surprising. Like if she were like a, it, like if it was like a white chick who said it, that'd be kind of weird. But I think if it's like a woman of color, it makes sense. But I don't know. I just I was like, there was a timelessness I thought to everything else about this. Like you could set it. This could be set really in any time period, aside from like the technology or whatever. Like that that part made me really like this is a, this is a modern piece of dialogue because I was I went in kind of worried that like. Oh, this is gonna be Catwoman's gonna be this real like feminist like I hate all men kind of kid, and it she really wasn't. She it really was like a, just a real person for all of it. I'm not saying her saying that doesn't make her real or whatever, like because I could see it, but um, they didn't lean into any of these like modern like annoying tropes of like you know you know race and identity politics anything like that except for that one line. Um, no. Well, I mean, I think because privilege was such an important part of the film in terms of, you know, like sort of the discrepancy, yeah. the Riddler's motivation, even at even the, it kind of even ties in at the end, because what I kind of and this kind of goes into the larger theme about Bruce's arc. What I kind of liked about it is that and again, this is not something that I think I've seen, but it finally framed his because again, like we think of Batman, it's like, oh, he's selflessly putting himself out there and fighting for the good. But what this movie kind of showed was that, eh, no, you're kind of being a selfish prick a little bit. You're kind of like, this is still driven by your inner rage. Like you can, yeah. you've kind of convinced yourself that you're doing it for vengeance and to protect people. And maybe on some level you are, that is a, that is what's driving you. But what truly is driving you is this rage that you just don't you have so much anger and confusion that you just don't know what to do with and you're just yeah. lashing out at the city and you think you're helping or you're kind of almost using that as like a cover yeah but then at the end he sort of realizes what what that sort of you know when the riddler when yeah. one of his goons says i am vengeance he finally realizes like oh shit i'm not having or, or yeah actually just to touch upon it i love the little detail at the very beginning, when he is fighting the the skull face goons, yeah, who are attacking that that innocent dude, and then after he chases him off, the dude looks at Batman, and is like, "Don't well, please don't hurt me." Yeah, yeah, and it really shows that like Batman doesn't realize that he's he's not he thinks he's protecting the citizens, but he's still scaring the shit out of them. He's yeah. scaring he's scaring the criminals, but he's also yeah. scaring the shit out of the citizens of Gotham as well. Yeah, and that's at the end. There, like, they're scared when he's even trying to like pull off the uh, the debris and like free those people from the water or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're still like, is this guy like one of these crazy people? Um, and that awesome scene when he's leading him out, he's become yeah with the flare, and he realizes he has to. Even that like small detail at the end when that woman's being airlifted up, 
yeah. and she kind of reaches out for him and you can yeah. see him he's like holding on to her and he doesn't want to let her go mm-hmm. and i think that's when he realizes he's he kind of realizes his own selfishness that his yeah. his crime fighting was in a sense for his own gain but now yeah. he realizes he has to start thinking about what can i do for the people of gotham not just myself yeah. And they're going to explore that in the next one because they're obviously doing the uh, No Man's Land storyline, which is the same thing they did in Dark Knight, right? Where Gotham is uh, this post-apocalyptic you know, setting now because in this one, the Riddler flooded the whole city, which um, I, I know I know it's like a movie contrivance. I shouldn't I shouldn't think too much of it because, again, we're just having fun. But how 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 much of a coincidence was it that he finally figures out the puzzle and plays the video right as the bombs go off? Because they were on a timer, right? Mm-hmm. And he had to go back to the house and like pull up the carpet and find a clue. But right as he hits play and the video ends, then the bombs go off where he can see it. I was like, okay, that's a yeah. that's a neat little coincidence, but that's just a movie thing. Oh, now that you mention it, that probably was like my in terms of like Pattinson's acting. Probably yeah. my favorite part was when. After they kidnap the Riddler, he they go to Riddler's apartment and he yeah. and from like sort of like the um the stuff he has in the wall, he thinks the Riddler knows who he is. Yeah. And so they go to the he goes to interrogate him, and this whole time you see Pattinson just like just acting with his eyes. You can tell yeah, he's yeah. horrified. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, you know, that which that, that, that was it was but. confusing too, because I, I, I thought he did for a while, but then I, I got it at the end that he actually didn't know. And that, Even though he's saying Bruce moment. Wayne over and over again, he's just talking about Bruce Wayne in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that moment of, and that moment, and that also ties into it. Yeah. That whole speech about, you know, oh, the poor orphan boy, you still have yeah. your millions of dollars. What about all of us? Yeah. And I think that was also something that factored into it. Like, you know, Bruce was very, again, he's so angsty, but at yeah. the same time, he's kind of, overlooking the fact that like look yes you are an orphan you have every right to be angry and confused yeah but the fact that you still have alfred you still yeah. have your millions of dollars it's he kind of had that blind spot and that's why yeah. i think that's why i kind of didn't mind catwoman's line in other movies yeah. absolutely i would have been like eh. but i think in this context because of how well it sit with the theme even going through not just like it wasn't even like a side theme. It was more of like rewatching it. I saw how it was sort of met, sort of like woven into the entire story. This idea of like privilege of him sort of having to learn to fight for the go- for the people of Gotham and not just himself. But is it white privilege or is it just privilege? Um, that's why I said if she just said these privileged motherfuckers or whatever, I would have been like, okay, that's that's totally fits into the theme. But the well, the I the racial identity politics I didn't feel that at all in this movie and I didn't want to see it at all in this movie. Uh, I, I know that could be just a still, personal thing. I think it fits just because it's you know it's the way our world is. It's the way the world has been for at least our the U.S. I should say for God knows how long. But the, the Riddler is white too, and he was an orphan and was part of this downtrodden society, and that didn't affect him. And I don't know, it just didn't feel like it was a race thing that this movie again i know it's just one line that mo- the movie doesn't actually like revolve around that too much um but for me i was like that felt like a modern forced writer line that they had to put in there for um you know whatever thing um when in reality i thought I, the movie is definitely about privilege and class and all this kind of stuff but i didn't i didn't feel it was like a racial thing i didn't want it to be either there's a black mayor at the end of the movie for you know it's it's it, it didn't seem like this was like the 19, you know, back in the day. Yeah, but there's still, I mean, like this, the legacy of it is still present even to this day. And again, if even from her perspective, even if you don't agree with her perspective, yeah. from her perspective as a black woman, it makes sense why she would think that way. And she is. And for the most part, even in the case of the Riddler, while he was underprivileged, the fact that he took it upon himself. And it, that, that that's kind of actually what I loved about the... Um, the parallels between even the subtle parallel of when they're showing the POV of the Riddler at the very beginning, when he's watching uh, the mayor in his home before he kills him. And then later when Batman is spying, it's the same POV shot. At first I couldn't tell whether it was Batman. And I think that was intentional to sort of draw a parallel between these two men who. So again, like, yeah, so the Riddler was not as privileged, but the fact that he still 
felt that his like like plenty of people in the city of Gotham were hurting, but the mm-hmm. fact that this one guy felt, took it upon himself to sort of like lash out and hurt innocent or well at the end he ended up hurting innocent people. Um, he but again sort of like with the Riddler he sort of thought he was doing the right thing. Yeah, kind of like how Bruce was. He's yeah. I'm doing this because to save people and for the good of man. When in yeah. reality, he's sort of lashing out. Yeah, and it's sort of so. It sort of still fits in the sense that these are two men who they have every right to be hurt and and sort of and and wounded, mm-hmm. but the way they're going about sort of you know reacting to that that sort of trauma that they've faced um, isn't helping anyone. It's actually hurting everyone, yeah. and that's what I think Batman realized at the end. Did you get the, uh, or did, did you feel like, so at, at, at before the bombs go off and he, and he floods the city, uh, Batman watches um, a video that he sent to his followers, um, you know, instructing them on what to do once he's captured and everything like that. Um, did you get the feeling that like, oh, this is like me here. This is, He's a content creator mm-hmm. talking to his fans, um, in this what? case, who are, you know, bad guys, but... Well, I think it was strange because it was, you know, I, people kind of laugh in the theater when that scene came up when, you yeah, know, because the, the whole time we're seeing him, you know, with the voice and like, yeah, he's this very like intimidating figure. And then in that, he's like, hey guys, what's up? Um, I actually really liked it. Like at first I was like, it, it was jarring, but I think the point of it was to show that. And then when the reveal of his followers aren't just followers they're yeah like people willing to do this yeah um that was a great subversive moment like you thought it was like a joke and then you're yeah. like oh shit no it's not it's like no very, i very serious no it was it was a good moment and i like again i i was laughing i because i was like oh this is like us we're content creators just like the fucking riddle like hey guys riddler here make sure you subscribe to my patreon so i can buy some bombs to blow Seriously. up the fucking city um if any of our followers are listening here, uh, don't don't blow up uh, don't blow up the water, the the bridge or whatever, and flood the city. Um, that's not that's not good. Although um, I feel like we should have some we should have some like a like a mask or something, you know, for our <laughs> for our people to wear. To um to sort of expand on that, what, kind of and to compare it to the Dark Knight because you know that's kind of what I've been thinking about comparing the movies. Um. What I loved about the ending of the Batman is the fact that um, it ended with very like actual, actual consequences. Like there's actually okay, now we're going into the next film in an entirely new environment. Mm-hmm. One of the things that really bugs me about a lot of even like even like the Marvel films where it's like this one continuous story, you know, a, an alien would come down to Earth and like destroy half a city block and then the next movie uh the effects wouldn't be they really wouldn't be felt no. they would be they'd be kind of mentioned here or there yeah but like the if in the, the the reason i'm calling it back is what always bugged me about the dark knight and maybe this is more an issue with the dark knight rises which that i think i don't think that film is very good i don't think it's good um, either yeah it the ending of the dark knight was like it promised this you know Bruce is going to take the fall for Dent, and now he's a hunted man yeah. to the police. He's a murderer. And then when it comes to Dark Knight Rises, we skip so far into the future, we never yeah. get to feel the effects of that. Yeah. Whereas with the Batman, I'm so excited because we know, as like right when part two comes out, we're immediately going to see the effects of... Because the flooding isn't just like, oh, shit got wet. It's caused anarchy in the city it does martial law the it's actually going to have very very concrete consequences and that's i i i've been i've been wanting that so much from a a movie like this for so long that i was like thank god (laughs) well i feel like marvel is so focused on making like very light-hearted fun movies um which are enjoyable but they they pick humor over everything so uh, spoiler if you I don't know if, you, if you guys haven't seen uh Thor Ragnarok. Very funny movie, very enjoyable, but it was so focused on humor that they they remove any amount of like seriousness into like the consequences of the actions. Like Asgard gets blown up at the end of <laughs> Thor Ragnarok and they play it as a joke. That little rock guy was like, 
it's okay. We can rebuild. We will make it a place for all race. And then the planet blows up. He's like, oh, never mind. It's gone. And and people laugh. And it's like, this is a, a place that we have been in for five movies now. You would think that like we would have some emotional attachment to ha- seeing it destroyed, but no. Um, what was It's just gone. What was so frustrating about that, too, was that Infinity War, which I still think is the best MCU movie by far, it showed that with Thor, he was he was so traumatized during that the entirety of that film. He was driven to try and kill Thanos. Um, very kind of very similar to Pattinson in the sense that like he's you know he's helping defeat Thanos, but it's for his own selfish reasons. He wants yeah. to sort of you know redeem himself for failing to protect his people. Um, and yet during the movie, Thor was still very funny. Yeah. But the but the humor didn't come from like dumb jokes. It came from just sort of like his his natural character coming out, like tree and rabbit, and, like yeah. stuff like that. Whereas in Endgame, what always bugged me is that they they kind of discuss his trauma, but then they just kind of like I I always really resented that film for just making him one big fat joke, which was yeah so I, I I don't like. Infinity War or Endgame, um, for reasons I think we should probably say for another <laughs> episode, we can jump into the minutia of Marvel. But um, going off of what we were talking about before, which is the Dark Knight Rises, um, they were in that movie. So all the Nolans are kind of co- are taking storylines from the comic books. So like uh, Batman Begins is taking elements from Batman Year One, which this movie kind of does too. Um, the Dark Knight takes it from. Uh, uh, the Long Halloween, which this movie borrows some elements from too. Um, and the Dark Knight Rises takes a storyline from uh, One Nightfall. That's when Bane breaks Batman's back, but also um, uh, the, the Dark Knight Returns, which is like one of the quintessential Batman stories. Batman's been retired for like you know, 10, 20 years. He's an old man now. The city's turned to you know corruption and decay. And it's like the 80s. Everyone's like a neon haired you know, criminal mutant. Um, and uh, Batman has to come out of retirement and, you know, beat the shit out of these people and, you know, restore order to Gotham. And um, that's what they were kind of playing on there. But it doesn't come through as much because the Dark Knight Rises was super stylized and super like leaned into like the craziness of the late 80s, early 90s aesthetic. Whereas the Dark Knight Rises, again, tried to be more like realistic aesthetic where it's like everything's kind of normal looking still and it led to this weird like tension where the storyline kind of demanded like some more like comic booky elements to it to make it like work but they were hyper focused on realism and it just feels weird to watch it like i don't know bane bane being just like a strong dude you know taking over the city for months on end with like I don't know. It just didn't feel like it didn't work. There was clashing, you know, even the whole Lazarus pit and like, you know, Bane's origin, it felt very like mystical. Um, Yeah. And that's kind of why, ironically, like looking back at the trilogy, I think the trilogy is less than the sum of its parts. Yeah. Um, I really like Batman Begins. I actually like rewatching. I think Batman Begins is actually incredibly solid. Um, Very good. The Dark Knight, I st- I still have problems with. I think I think the thing with the Dark Knight is that there are aspects of it that I think are straight up ten out of ten, yeah. and there are others that I think they're like six out of ten. I agree. And it's like this like sort of like hot and cold thing. Where the Dark Knight Rises, I think it's just, and obviously like you know, Tale of Two Cities. It, it's <laughs> the fact that like they have, I, I don't know if that was Nolan being sentimental, but like the Tale of Two Cities parallels are very obvious like in the narrative and then at the end he reads the line at uh bruce's funeral and it's like okay we get it nolan that that was i think that was like him at his most like yeah like too indulgent where i'm like bro like chill (laughs) well he didn't even want to make that movie to be honest but the studio asked him to um and he just went along with it and you could tell it's just not it didn't have the passion and the tightness that his other you know, yeah. two movies had done. Um, I think he was just over it at that point, and it, sh- it just shouldn't have been made. But, I mean, also, it has, you know. Also, I think it, it was kind of strange, too, because, and I, I might be wrong here, but I think, so we see Batman begins, Bat- Bruce becomes Batman. The Dark Knight takes place, what, a year or two after that? Yeah, like, it, uh, yeah, about a year, probably. He'd been, like, taking out crime slowly, and, you know, he was starting to win at that point. 
and then but then at the end of dark knight which only takes place over like probably like a few months maybe like yeah, yeah. not very long yeah and then it skips 12 years to yeah. that and then it's like it's like oh where's batman and it's like i feel like he was only around for, it's not like he was like working for like a decade and then disappeared yeah. like he was only around for like a year <laughs> again and that's the, like <laughs> that's them borrowing you know the dark knight returns mm-hmm. which again was playing off of like decades of comic book history so when batman disappeared it had more of an impact um but again i i just think that he did the best he could with like what his universe was set up to do i don't think it was set up to do that kind of storyline there um but he you know applied his touch as best he could and it had it had good moments i think too the fight sequence with bane was really cool like very visceral Mm-hmm. It, it, there was no cutting it was no music you just saw Bane beat him fucking down on camera um, yeah i think i think if i think reeves said he had a plan for the, his trilogy and i think it's i think even if the dark knight to, for many even if the dark knight surpasses um any film that comes out of the, the reeves trilogy i think yeah. as a whole the reeves trilogy is going to far surpass the nolan trilogy um to get just to kind of wrap it back around to the the batman yeah. One of the main faults I heard from a lot of fans, which I really dislike, I think it's a completely off base, really stupid critique. A lot of people were critiquing that while his Batman, so, you know, Batman, the Batman, Pattinson did fantastic as he, they didn't like him as Bruce. I don't think, I don't agree with that. I, I, I'm like the exact same way. I'm like, people keep trying to like, say that like oh well they're two they're supposed to be like two completely separate characters and it's like well the, the issue there is that again it's like he's only yeah he's early two, on he's only a year or two into his crime fighting he's he's still in that like you know he's still in an angsty stage yeah to the to the point where he doesn't even that that kind of um is also also kind of factors into the privilege aspect of it when the mayor tells him you know you could be doing more for the city and the yeah. irony is at the time I thought it was just going to be a tongue in cheek joke. Yeah. But what I realized was that I think the film was actually saying something in that look you are doing good as Batman but and this is actually a critique I got in my Watchmen video cuz someone pointed it out in the comics and and again you can kind of flesh this out it's more or less like Batman or Bruce Wayne tries to do as much as he can as yeah. Bruce Wayne with his resources. But yeah. then there's a time when he has to put on the suit and do certain things he can't do. Yeah. Um, whereas in this film, he was neglecting the first half. He didn't yeah. even want to be Bruce. But yeah, it was kind of, again, it was kind of selfish in a way. Like you could be doing a lot for the city as Bruce Wayne, even if you yeah. don't like it. But the fact that you're neglecting that, I think in the next film, we're going to see a lot more he's going to yeah. take a more active Bruce Wayne role. Yeah, no, it, I, I think it depends on what incarnation you're talking about. Some comics have leaned into that, like, you know, he's this really good, you know, person as Bruce Wayne, and then he puts on the Batman costume just to fight crime that he can't solve with, you know, charities or whatever. Others have leaned more into, like, this movie, which is, like, Batman's so damaged that, like, this is his, you know, his his reaction to all the things that happened. It's Again, it's that vengeance him taking control, him feeling in control by putting on the costume and um, letting his you know inner darkness take out these criminals. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that you're right. I think that we're, we're, we're so early on in his career that, you know, he hasn't established this like playboy persona where he's like, you know, acting one way in public and acting another as Batman to keep up appearances. He doesn't care at all about appearances yet. He doesn't care about his legacy as, as Bruce Wayne. They touched on that a little in, in Batman Begins. He's like, you know, I don't care about my my name or whatever. And then Alfred's like, it's not just your name. It's your father's name, too. Mm-hmm. Or even, but even in Batman Begins, like it, that, that was kind of like my, the frustration I had with that was yeah. that it seemed like he became Batman immediately. Yeah. It seemed like even in Batman Begins and even the Dark Knight, to some extent, he had that. He actually, I wonder if this is going to factor in the fact that he th- thought that the Riddler knew who he was in the Batman, Pat Battenson. I wonder if that's going to sort of like scare him into being like, oh shit, maybe I should like 
yeah i should be more careful and i I should actually like create this bruce wayne alter ego to keep people off my scent because he came so close or Mm -hmm. at least he thought to getting discovered i think so too i think i think we'll see him again take a more active role in like charities like he does in a lot of his incarnations um helping people out through his you know billions of dollars but also still putting on the costume kicking ass which um i really liked the the costume he was in in this one and i liked that he was like tanking bullets like straight to the fucking uh uh you know chest and shit and just bouncing off it made him look like a demon almost which i can see why criminals were scared shitless of him because you're shooting this dude and bullets are bouncing off of him and he just looks insane which again he kind of he kind of is in this movie and um i think pattinson reflected that uh uh in in his performance like being just he's the creepy batman right now um i think we'll slowly see him transform into like the normal kind of comic book batman but um he's like a weirdo uh, which yeah. is exactly what someone who dresses up like a bat would do you know in real life and yet you can still tell that he's in inside he's got this deep empathy like that yeah, yeah. even something as small as like the little motif of him and the son of the man yeah. and how he keeps coming back something as small as that is so perfect just to show that like again because i think what this film really demonstrated and again i don't think it's present at all in nolan's batman which always really bugged me is that at the end of the day especially in his early career as we see batman is or bruce wayne when we first meet him in the batman he is to some extent a scared little boy still that's kind of what he's just a scared little boy lashing out and he doesn't he has all this rage doesn't know what to do with it and it's causing him to not really see the effect he's having on yeah. on the citizens of Gotham. Yeah. Um, and then it's only at the end when he realizes he kind of, I think he kind of grows into a man. He actually becomes the Batman yeah. at the end when, yeah. so in, in a way, I think it actually is an origin story um, to some extent in the sense that at the end, he finally reaches this epiphany of, I have to do this for, the people of gotham not myself yeah because that was selfish this is what i have to do um and i'm i'm curious to see how pattinson is going to reflect that in his performance for part two i feel like i've been accidentally saying patterson instead of pattinson this whole pattinson. time so that's fine <laughs> i apologize to the Padding, viewers who, paddington the greatest uh, film of all time i'm gonna I'm call him edward because <laughs> i'm i'm team edward to be honest so edward um, <laughs> so I, I brought my uh, fiance to watch the movie with me because she's she loves fucking twilight and I wanted to see from her point of view, like what she thought of, of, of him as an actor and how he's grown. And if he was, you know, the same guy as that movie or if he had improved, cause I, I, had, I've seen twilight, like maybe the first one once I don't, I'm not a fan of the series. And she said that he, he definitely grew, he grew as an actor. Like it's not nearly as stiff, even though it's a little stiff, but that's again, because he's a stiff character. He's like, you know, um, a little bit of a weirdo. Um, she she felt he grew as an actor since that role too, and I'm sure since you've seen him in movies, you can agree to that too. But um, when I saw him in Good Time, I was like, "What the fuck? Yeah. Where did that come from?" Because I, well, I I, I kind of felt bad because like I had I had only ever seen him in Twilight, so yeah, I didn't really kind of give him the even, he was even in um a film my sister watched, Remember Me. It was that you know it was like a kind of like a romantic drama, but even there he was pretty good. He still showed yeah. promise outside of just like. Edward, I think a, you know, I think a lot of these yeah. actors who we can we kind of write off can give fantastic performances under the right direction mm-hmm. because direction is also such a key part in a in a performance like you know George Lucas can make anyone look bad with his directing style um, and wouldn't but um, I really like these like actors who we kind of write off and I like seeing them in like really dramatic roles where they get to you know shine I think the same thing is true of like um, com- comedic actors like Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler does movies that are disgustingly terrible, just awful trash. But then he'll do something like uh, Rain Over Me or Punch Drunk Love, which are these really dramatic roles, which I think he fucking shines in. He's a Juilliard trained actor. Or un- or Uncut Gems, where it's like the Sa- the Safties just love reforming like down bad actors. Pattinson, Sandler, they'll just take them and make them give the best performance of their career. Yeah, I think I think they. You know, a lot of these actors we sleep on can give fantastic performances with the right role in the right direction. And um, I love seeing like non-traditional 
people in these kind of roles because you would never think like oh this guy's gonna be batman with that something like affleck you're like okay yeah he's a a-list you know main star actor of course he's gonna be batman but um yeah i love seeing i want to see different casting than we usually expect um and i think we're gonna get that in this series as well yeah i'm uh it was funny because me and my girlfriend we had went to see it too um on friday night we were i was a bit nervous because you know i'm so excited for the trilogy you know with matt reeves he has full control over it he's not gonna have to like play a ball with like hey do you want to like incorporate these other movies he's like get the fuck away from me <laughs> like yeah. let me do my thing yeah. um i think that's what i actually think dc in the next five or ten years depending on how things go is going to surpass marvel in terms of if they keep on this path of kind of letting creatives come in and have individual control over their products without too mm -hmm. much concern over making yeah. sure it all fits together marvel is already in my book sort of just shit the bed like they're just so they hit their peak with Endgame. Even by Endgame, I think a lot of aspects of it were kind of, eh. but after Endgame, now it's just like there's no in. I I don't really get the investment. I I can't even see how people still watch all the series. I can't even understand that. I'm like the the level of of investment that was there. Maybe like back when, like I remember seeing Iron Man theaters, like it was there. I had an investment and then it just dwindled. And then now it's just like, holy, I couldn't even bring well, myself to watch like an episode of, we, oh, we, we watched the first episode of Hawkeye and that was it. And I'm like, and my girlfriend's like, do you watch that one? I'm like, no, I'm like you yeah. can, but I'm not going to. Well, well, you know, now we're going to have to do an episode talking about Marvel because that's a whole hour long discussion right there talking about the intricacies of the series. And I agree with you completely. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious um, to hear your take on infinity war and endgame because i thought i think infinity war is like the best of the mcu by far okay, and endgame so we'll, is just no. we'll have a we'll have a spicy discussion yeah. uh, on another episode here um but kind of wrapping up some thoughts since we're coming up on our hour here um i i want to i want to talk a little bit more about the podcast so we talked a lot about the batman but um i want to bring it back to like again what people can expect from this what we're going to do um we really come we really go into these things with no clear agenda like this is not a, like a highly scripted edited podcast it's just gonna be things that you know pop up or like in this discussion right start talking about the different batman movies talked about marvel a little bit talked about filmmaking in general um and i think for, from from all these things we're going to talk about every episode will have a kind of like central idea of like oh this is generally what the episode's focused about um but it's just going to be like our thoughts you know our different critiques of different things where it leads um and then also hopefully you'll get to learn a little bit more about us as as people you know yeah yeah i think it'll i think it'll come out especially because i think one um episode we're gonna do you know some stuff like uh you know should there be a black bond or stuff like that so if we mm -hmm. kind of pick in, in terms of those topics, I think you'll start to see our viewpoints come out sort of naturally, not just yeah. like us just like stating them, but just sort of like you'll yeah. kind of see our viewpoints manifested in how we kind of our views on certain, you know, culture war, quote unquote, yeah. topics in the day, which luckily I think it's kind of slowed down. I, I mean, think so Laura, too. There's Lord of the Rings, but I don't like I'm not a Tolkien fan, yeah. so I don't know, but. I again, I, I really loved about how this movie. I, I went in thinking like, oh, they're gonna say some stuff that's gonna stir a bunch of controversy, which I think some movies do intentionally because it's like any publicity is good publicity, right? If a bunch of internet trolls are pissed off at your movie, it kind of adds more to your to your people are talking about it, tweeting about it, more people go to it. Um, but I, you're right. I felt like this movie too was really it stayed above all that and just it was just a character story. Um, and there was nothing like modern or really annoying about it um, that would make people be like, I want to fight over this thing. Um, I think anyone, can, I mean, regardless I'm, of your politics, can enjoy it. I'm sure like there's the, like, like, I'm sure there's like already people like melting down over the, like the white privilege line or, or just like sort of like the general vibe of the movie of sort of like the yeah. idea of the privileged verse, which is I'm just kind of funny. Like, you know, when you hear like, not like the majority, but like when I hear like some people say like, oh, the it's political it's like it's like you know and i and again as someone who's like a fan of the comics and the series i feel like it's always been 
some like at least implicitly like the fact that batman the bat uh bruce wayne is a billionaire doesn't just kind of like go unaddressed like it's still kind of like maybe not like explicitly there's yeah. not like a scene where they're like let me tell you about like wealth privilege but yeah. it's always sort of there in it's kind of in the picture yeah I, again i think it depends on the incarnation like at the beginning it was just like an excuse for why he has all mm-hmm. these fucking expensive tools right you can't just he's not just like superman with his powers or whatever he's got to have all these tools to you know play with and stuff um but you do have the comics have gotten more and more political as time went on uh, which people like and don't like about it um i have my own thoughts about it which could be again its own video um again i'm, I'm not i i was into comics a lot growing up and i kind of got out of it and I think for I think for a lot of it's just you know as time goes on you just kind of lose interest on seeing the same thing over and over again. I think the same thing is like true for Marvel for you, which is like the movies still might be good, but I've seen twenty fucking movies of this series now. I'm I just don't really want to watch any more. No. Um, but luckily we have a bunch of new stuff coming up, and um, this is also a great excuse for me to watch new stuff. Because I never watch anything new, almost Same. ever. I, I, I watch up, old stuff. Nine times out of ten, I end up rewatching Sopranos. <laughs> oh, God, yes. Like, like uh, I try to start a new series, and I just like the investment is like, yeah. Especially after, like, especially after like the residual trauma from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Where I'm so afraid, even if I do get into a show, it's gonna yeah. shit the bed in season four, and I'm like, great, I wasted all that time. House of the Dragon. Oh God. <laughs> well, I just. I'm, I, I, you know, I'm always, I've always been sort of like adverse to prequels just for the sort of, oh, what's yeah. going to happen. It's like, well, we kind of know. We know. In general. But. Yeah. Uh, well, the audience, if you're not a book reader, you don't know. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those things as they come up again. This platform is a great opportunity for us to force ourselves to kind of check out new stuff because even if it shits the bed, we can talk about it on this podcast and make some content. So um i think we're i think this was a good discussion we're coming up on our hour here so um i'll just say thank you to all the viewers um we're still getting kind of used to each other's style and getting used to you know the podcasting format so expect it only to go uphill from here and uh do you have any ending thoughts you want to leave for the listeners um oh just the last because i thought i forgot to sort of touch on it as much as i love gary oldman in the nolan trilogy i really like the relationship between jeffrey wright and batman in this one where they're just kind of bros like you can kind of tell like this iteration of gordon just like he you can tell he is like a good man and he actually wants to get shit done and he knows the batman can't do it so he's just i love how he's just like ride or die he's just like dude just let him do his thing like he knows what he's doing jeffrey Um, wright's like in everything he's like in every single fucking movie and series now i like uh, ever since he i don't know what his first one was if it was westworld or maybe there was a bigger one before that he was in boardwalk empire too but well he was his felix, career has just exploded well he played felix Leiter in casino royale and he i mean he he was oh, in the yeah. second movie but then and then he was gone until the fifth one but he's yeah. yeah he's just been like around but anything he's in he's good he's yeah, like one he's of those a, actors where ev- whatever he's in he's clutch. Yeah, he's just he's one of those ones who's exploded recently mm-hmm. um but i uh I was, I was meaning more like, do you have any like ending thoughts for the viewers? In terms yeah, of sorry. I, I, the knew what you, I knew what you meant, but I was just like, that was yeah. the one thing that I forgot. I got you. I, I was got like, you. oh shit, I want to mention that because I, I love that. You. Like the whole punching scene. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I hope you guys enjoy. And um, yeah, we'll try to pick some of the spicy topics to give measured takes on because yeah. otherwise we don't want to. Otherwise, it's just like the YouTube youtube content sort of like you know like polarized either it's like one or the other and it's like okay yeah chill dude and i guess i should also mention um this is going to be a video podcast on youtube because obviously we're youtubers and most of our audience is there um but this podcast is also going to be available on all um podcast uh you know sites apple podcast spotify whatever um i'll link that to that in the description of this video include all the relevant links to our you know our rss feed you can download it in your favorite podcast player um we're, again we're this is our first episode so we're very new to all this but we're going to get this down to kind of a science here uh in terms of uploading so um you have that to look forward to and uh we'll talk to you guys in the next episode coming soon